Hi everybody, I'm Melanie from Calm Tie Dyes. So in this video, we're gonna do a 12 point mandala on a tapestry and we're gonna show you the whole process, the folding, the tying, the dye placement, and at the end we'll do the reveal, which is always the most satisfying part. This video was a bit of a challenge for me. It took me outside of my comfort zone a little bit because um, I tried some new folds and new ties that I had never done before. So I was doing them for the first time on the video. Um, so I wasn't sure how that was gonna work out. And then when I went to place the dye on the fabric, I found a mistake that I made that I thought would really change the overall design in my tapestry. And that made me second guess whether or not it was even gonna look good. So for that reason, I'm calling this the mystery mandala um, because that's what it was. By the time I pulled this out of the sink to reveal it to all of you, I was like, I have no idea how this is gonna look. And it was scary, but it was exciting. And um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope that uh, you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed uh, making it. When I started editing it, I really had a lot of fun um, putting it all together. So before we do this though, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I post a new video. I just really appreciate your support so much. We just passed 200 subscribers on YouTube. We're looking forward to making more videos for you. I really have a lot of fun doing this. So I hope that you have a lot of fun watching them. Here we go, guys. 40 minutes of tie-dye fun starts right now. All right, so we're gonna get started with this 12 point mandala. This is a 50 inch by 50 inch piece of muslin. I have hemmed it myself, then I soaked it in soda ash and hung it up to dry. So the fabric is dry and ready to go. The first step with any mandala is to fold your fabric in half. So I've already done that. You can see here that I've got it folded in half. So I'm just gonna lay this out here and smooth it out a little bit. So when you're folding a six point or a 12 point mandala, from here, you want to fold your fabric into thirds. And a lot of people uh, use a protractor to figure out where those folds need to be. I do not have a protractor. So I went online looking for tips or tricks or a tutorial on how to fold the fabric into six or 12 points. And I found a video by a fellow tie dyer, his name is Howard. Howard is a master at the mandala and he has some great videos. His channel is Backstage Dyes. I will link that in my description below. So Howard has a video where he's folding some bandanas and he uses this trick to fold them into 12 point mandalas. And I think it's just really cool. So I'm just spreading that tie dye love and sharing it with all of you. So this is what I learned from Howard. If you don't have a protractor, you can easily figure out exactly where you need to make your folds. To do that, you need to fold your tapestry in half again. So I'm gonna do that. So I've got this folded in half again. So now this tapestry is folded in fourths. This is the starting point for eight point mandalas and 16 point mandalas. We're just doing this to make some guidelines. So we've got this folded in force. Now we're gonna take the center of our mandala and we're gonna fold it again. And smooth it out. This is the fold that we wanna concern ourselves with right now, this fold here. So you've got your center of your mandala and your two folds. You've got your four corners up here, okay? This is the opposite side of that. So I'm pressing down on this, putting a nice crease into it and you'll understand why here in just a minute. Now we're gonna unfold it back to where it's folded in half. So we're back to the spot where it's folded in half. This is the center point from where we folded it in fourths. And these are the guidelines that we made when we folded it again and creased it. We're gonna use them now to help us fold this into thirds. This is such a cool trick. I love it. It's awesome. It's 
gonna look upside down to you guys, but hopefully it'll still make sense. So you've got your tapestry folded in half here. You've got your center point here. You're gonna take this corner and you're gonna bring it up to this guideline and you're gonna make sure that that fold doesn't go past your center mark here. So we're gonna bring this up and I'm gonna turn this this way so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'm bringing this corner to this guideline, but I'm also making sure that my center point is where that fold stops. So I've got the fold right here at the center line and I've got this corner coming right up to this guideline. That's your fold right there. You wanna make sure that your creases are nice and flat, that you don't have any wrinkles in your fabric. So here you go. Hopefully you guys can see this. You've got your center point here and you've brought that one corner up to this guideline right here. Now we're gonna take the whole thing and flip it over. Underneath here, you can see that fold we made. It's right there. Now we're gonna take this corner and we're gonna fold it up to this edge right here. Again, we're watching our center point here. We wanna make sure that that stays nice and flush. And we wanna make sure that our edges here are lined up. And if you have done this right, your edges will line up on both sides. So, at this point, your fabric is folded in thirds. You've got your center point here of your mandala. This stuff up here is your corners and those come off of the edge of the mandala here. All right, so from here, you've got two edges of your triangle and they both have two folds on them. So you can fold the rest of this from either side, but whatever side you choose to use, that's the side you wanna use for the rest of your folds because you want one side to have two folds when you're finished and the other side to have multiple folds. I am going to make this where my multiple folds are, which means I'm gonna use this side where there are two folds and continue to bring those down. So I'm gonna bring it down here, just like this. Again, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on my center point here. Want to make sure that that stays um, as nice as possible. The folds tend to get a little wonky um, with every new fold, but just keeping it as lined up as I can, keeping these edges as flush as possible and smoothing out my creases as I go. One more fold on this side. So at this point, you should have one layer left over here, and you should have four layers here. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna take this whole thing and flip it over, and we're gonna try to do that without screwing up the folds that we've created. So I'm gonna grab it here, nice and firm, and I'm gonna grab it here, and I'm gonna flip it over. Now we're gonna finish this up by doing two folds on this side. So. Here's one. And two. All right. This is your 12 point mandala. This is where you want to be to start tying this up. Your folds here are going to shift and move as you tie this up and play around with it. So I'm going to put a couple of binder clips on this just to hold these folds in place while we're tying it up. All right. 
So that'll hold my folds in place and keep them from moving around too much. Just wanna show you guys again where we're at here. So we've got two folds on this side. Here's our center point. We've got six folds on this side. You wanna try and keep these folds in your center as nice as possible um, so that you have some nice detail there. We're gonna do something different with the, with the center of this today, so I'm not so worried about the folds here, but for a dream catcher or for a really detailed center, you wanna make those folds as crisp as you can. All right, the other thing that I wanted to show you is right here, you wanna watch when you're looking at your folds, you wanna find the shortest folds in here. In this case, it's this one and this one, and then this one here. Those are important to keep an eye on because that is where the edge of your mandala is. Okay, so everything beyond that, all of this out here is just your corners and, and your outer edge of your tapestry. So if you want the mandala itself to stay within the boundaries of your tapestry, you don't want to fold past there. That's where it's going to stop. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is tie off the center because I'm going to, I'm going to make the center kind of messy here, but I want to tie it off before I do that. So I'm going to tie a slip knot in my sinew. This is just one sinew that I'm going to be using today. Um, I have this one and then I have another one that's really waxy. And I just have to figure out where I want the center of this to be. I want it to be a fairly decent sized circle. So I think I'm going to go to about, about here. So I'm going to put my slip knot on here. About, about right there. Okay. I'm just gonna wrap this a couple of times here because I want a nice line here where I'm tying this off. This sinew is awesome. So this is waxed sinew that I got from Dharma Trading Company and it is super waxy. It feels like a candle and if I hold it in my hand too long, it gets like super sticky. This is a little tart stamper that I bought on Amazon for $5. It's amazing. So what I do is I wind some of my sinew on this tart stamper and that way I can pull as hard as I want and the wood the little wooden thing here gives me lots of leverage when I'm pulling but it doesn't ruin the entire roll of sinew so if you look at this you can see you can see how tight that is there. That's for me pulling on the sinew when it was still on the roll. So to avoid that, I just wrap some on this. So I'm gonna cut off this slack here. And I'm just gonna wrap. All right, I've got some sinew wrapped on this. This will be enough for this project. So I am going to tie a slip knot in this. So where I've tied this off here, I'm going to put some white sinew over it because I just want it to be really tight. So, I'm gonna do that first. And this stuff is so strong. I have not broken it yet, which I love. So, the key to getting nice tight ties is to pull really tight on the sinew. So, I'm gonna put all my weight onto this and pull at the same time and that will tighten that up. I'm just going to wrap this a couple of times here. 
nice and tight. And I'm gonna pull. That's nice and tight now. I'm gonna wrap this one more time. And pull it. And I'm gonna cut it. For the center of this, normally, I do a dream catcher, which is just the little ties back and forth to create those lines. For this one, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna scrunch it. And then I'm gonna use Wedgwood Blue in it, which is a really cool blue that splits into some really cool colors under ice. And my goal in using the Wedgwood Blue is to get something that looks kind of like a planet. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, for this, I'm just gonna use rubber bands. They will serve the purpose well. That's all we want right there. We just want it to, to stay scratched. So that's perfect. All right, now it's time to get into the folds, which will be fun. So the first fold or the first point off of this, I want to be pretty sharp. So I'm gonna fold a pleat fold along this line. So for this, I'm gonna turn this around because I'm left-handed and it's just easier for me. So for this, we're just gonna do a pleat fold on this, okay? So I'm just gonna pleat this up and then tie it off. So pleat like this. this so you just pleat that up and you'll see that you've got a zigzag there that's what you want okay and then this pleat you're just gonna tie the sinew around it you're gonna put the sinew right along that line and tie it off all right after several attempts, I think I am good. All right, guys, so I've got that first that first line finally folded up and tied. You've got this little zigzag going here, which is good, we wanted that. So the next thing we're gonna do is just draw another line here that we can fold on. So I wanna do an S, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, <laughs> now I'm gonna fold along this line and tie it off. So that's the next time I'm gonna do. All So that curved line was a little bit too curvy and didn't really um, make for easy folding. So I made it a little less curvy and, and folded it along that. So this is all experiment and experimentation. Like I've not, not done anything like this before. So 
um, we'll see what happens. So the next thing I'm gonna do, um, I think is, uh, let's see, I'm gonna try, this and we'll see what happens with that all right having fun with this guys we'll see what happens um, I'm just kind of folding in all kinds of crazy ways here I'm just gonna play around with this for a minute and see what my fabric wants to do. Okay. So this is the side with multiple folds here. So anything on this side, like this fold here, is going to be a main point on the mandala. So I want to try and do something else over here that's going to be kind of cool. So maybe what I'll do is I'll maybe do a curved line and a straight line. I'm gonna pleat fold this first, and then I'll see if I can get this one pleat folded. And if I can't, then maybe I'll curve it a little bit more. We'll see what happens. See, that's gonna make it impossible to do this one. So, let's see, maybe, Instead, I'll just do one long curved line here and see how that goes. Guys, I have no idea what this is gonna look like, but this is the end of our mandala. So this is uh, this is as far as we can go as far as tying up the design of the mandala itself. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some kite string around this just to hold these these pleats because I've got kind of a cool zigzag over here and I'm not sure what that's gonna do as far as like the, the pattern goes in the mandala but I kind of want to keep that in place so I'm gonna use kite string and tie that up All right, same with this one. I'm gonna tie this up with some kite string because I think I had a rubber band on there, but it came off. So, do this. All right, let's see, what else can we do here? We've got, uh, this is the edge of our tapestry, so we really don't wanna go any further than this with our ties but for all of this we can just pleat it up if we want to i wonder if i could pleat it this way yes that's what we're gonna do okay so this i'm gonna pleat like this
All right, guys. So I got this folded up. I have no idea what it's gonna look like. The whole point of this video, honestly, was to show you guys how to fold a 12 point mandala. But I don't know if this is actually gonna be a mandala when we get done with it. These ties are weird and I have no idea what this thing is gonna look like when we unfold it. But we're gonna move forward and we're gonna do it because it's an adventure. So this here is the center and I decided to use kite string on it. So I, I just scrunched it up where the multiple folds are here. Um, these are the main points on our mandala. And then this is our first offset here. And I think this was the curved line that we did. And then I, I just tied an extra nub in that. So yeah, we'll see what that's all about. And then here is where we did that, that V. So we'll see what happens there. And then the pleats kind of changed direction here. So it started to pleat one way and then it pleated the other way. And what's cool about that is like, you can't really see it with the kite string, but you've got like some zigzags in here and you've got some zigzags here, which will give us cool designs. And we've got zigzags here, which will give us cool designs. So I don't know what it's gonna look like. I hope it's cool. I hope when we unfold it, we're like, whoa, this is awesome, but it might also be a hot mess. We'll find out tomorrow. This did not go at all as I expected. This video is gonna be ridiculous. I'm gonna get some dye on this and some ice so that we can continue with our adventure. All right, we've got our tapestry ready to go here and I'm gonna start putting some dye powder down on it. As I do, I'm gonna walk you guys through the process and tell you which colors I'm using and why I chose those colors for each particular section. So here in the center, I decided to go with two different colors. The first color is Wedgwood Blue. And this is one of my favorite colors to use when I'm ice dyeing because of the way it splits and breaks apart. Um, it never disappoints. It always gives some really cool effects. Um, it splits into blue and gray and purple. It's just a really pretty color. So I chose that first. And then on top of the Wedgwood Blue, I wanted to use a second color that also had some really cool splits and gave some really cool effects. So for that color, I chose Avocado. This one breaks into brown and green and sometimes just a little bit of yellow. And my goal in using these colors together in the center is to um, have them split and then blend and give us something that looks like the earth or at least like a planet. That is my vision in using these two colors together in the center. So this first section off of the center here is an offset. And that's actually a mistake. Um, when I normally, I tie a main point off of the center. That's usually the first tie. So when I was tying this, I did it at a sharp angle, hoping for a long, sharp point. But it was at this point when I started to lay down this die that I realized this is not a main point. This is an offset. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays into the final design when we unfold this and look at it. But I wanted um, to use a really bright color here. So I put down some tangerine, which is a, a bright pastel orange with some yellow and red splits. And then I decided to top that with some deep orange, which is a deeper, richer orange. So again, I layered two colors together. And when those uh, blend, hopefully they'll give us some cool definition um, in here and some contrast. So when I was laying down the powder, a little bit of the orange powder did fall into the center, um, but I don't think that it's gonna make a big difference. I think it'll blend really nicely and give us some cool contrast. Okay, so thanks to my happy little accident, um, this next section, this large section here, is the first main point in our mandala design. And it's not gonna be the shape that I originally planned. 
um, that long sharp point that I originally planned is actually going to be that first offset. So the design is, is going to be different than what I had envisioned when I started this, but I think it's still going to be really cool. Um, this next section here, this large section, um, is what was created when I drew the S shaped, the curved line and folded that. That's what gave us this big section here. So it's gonna be the first main point in our mandala. It's gonna be a big part of the design. And I think it's also gonna have some really cool textures in it because of the pleats and the way it folded. So I wanted to use a color here that would pop and stand out, but I also wanted it to allow for the textures in the folds to show through. So I used peacock blue because that's always been a really cool um, color that I've used when I wanted the texture to show through. And I think that that'll work really well here in this section. So this offset here is split in half and that's because I went in and added that sinew there um, just as an additional tie to split this into two distinct sections. So I'm gonna use two colors here. The first is khaki, and this is a new color for me. I've only used it once before, and it was just a little bit. So I'm not sure how this splits, but brown and blue typically look good next to each other and provide some nice contrast. So that's why I chose to use the khaki here next to the peacock blue. Um, is I'm hoping that they just look good next to each other. Then I used amber waves in the other part of the offset here. This is one of my favorite colors to use if I need a warm yellow and it splits um, into yellow and brown. So my thought here is that amber waves next to the khaki would blend really well and look good together and I'm hoping that they also provide some nice contrast against the peacock blue. So this is going to be the final main point in our mandala. So I wanted to use a, a nice color here that was going to kind of show off the edge of the mandala. So I chose Pagoda Red. Um, it's a new red for me, but it's a nice warm red and it has um, kind of a, a reddish brown hue to it. So I thought that it would look good next to the khaki and the amber waves. And then for the next color, I wanted to use something that would blend really nicely with the pagoda red and separate it from the rest of the tapestry from the very outer edge. So I used tangerine here um, because I had used that earlier in the design. So it was just kind of a way to tie the whole thing together. And because the tangerine is such a nice bright color um, and it splits into reds and yellows, I just thought that it would blend really nicely with the pagoda red. So I just kind of wanted to tie the whole thing together and give a nice bright finish to the mandala itself. Okay, so we're down to the final stretch here. This section um, where the pleats start is the outer edge of the mandala. So this is what is going to surround the mandala itself and go out to the edge of the tapestry. So here I'm using terracotta. It's a nice kind of a brownish orange. Um, and I just thought that it would look really good next to the tangerine and, and give a nice blend of colors. So that's what I chose to use here. Um, just to kind of finish off the outer edge of the tapestry. And then where the pleats change direction here, this is going to be just the corners of the tapestry and maybe a little tiny bit on the, on the edge in some spots. And so for this section, I used Dances with Raisins. This is a fun, funky color, um, especially when you're using it in ice dyeing. It splits into some really cool colors, like a, a violet purple and pink and peach and orange and brown. There's just all kinds of cool colors in Dances with Raisins. So I just thought it would be a fun way to finish off this tapestry. So there you go, that's how I laid the dies down on this. I started in the center with the Wedgwood Blue and the Avocado, and then I did the Tangerine and the Deep Orange here, the Peacock Blue in that first main point, the Khaki and the Amber Waves in this offset, and then I did Pagoda Red here in the final point, 
and then I followed that with a little bit of tangerine and again I, I did that just to kind of tie everything together and then for the outer edge of the tapestry I went with terracotta and dances with raisins so now it is time to get some ice on this um, so that the dye powder can dissolve and move through the fabric and that's where the real magic happens so let's uh, get ready to do that and get some ice on it these strips of plastic that you see me using here um, it's just a a thin cutting mat that I bought at the dollar store and cut into strips and I use those just to keep the ice in place so that it doesn't topple off of the fabric. All right, I built my barrier up around my tapestry. I covered it with ice, sprinkled the entire thing with soda ash powder, and then I added just a little bit more orange and blue here. As you can see, um, a lot of the powder fell off into the bin underneath when I was putting the ice on. So I just added a little bit more powder on those sections. So now we just let it sit. We let the ice melt and we let it batch. And in about 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, we will rinse it out and see what it looks like. Okay guys, it is time to reveal our mystery mandala. Oh, I'm very excited. Okay, so. This is definitely gonna be lighter on one side than it is on the other. I could tell that just as I was rinsing it, but I still think it's gonna be amazing. So. Just trying to get all of the string off here. So bear with me. This is exciting stuff, guys. Mistakes were made. But I think it's also gonna be a learning experience. There will be lessons learned. If I can ever get I'm gonna have to let this go. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. Okay. Wow, this sinew is tight on here. The sinew is crazy tight. There it goes. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. One more. Okay. So, lots of new folds on this, and um, no idea how it's gonna look, but we are about, oh my gosh, about to find out. Okay, you guys ready? Look at this. I am excited. I can't even see it all yet. I'm excited about it. So, here it is. As usual, it's going to be lighter once I rinse it out. But does this look like the earth at all? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. And I was right, that first point, oh, look at this, this is so cool. So the first, the first main point on our mandala is the blue and that looks cool. But this is the oranges that we used in the offset, you guys, look at that point right there. It's so cool. I may have to do more where the offset is the first thing I do off of the center because that's just awesome sauce. Hey, husband. Yeah. <laughs> How does it look? Awesome. Is it cool? Awesome. Do you love it? Uh-huh. Huge really success. Our mystery mandala is magnificent. So I'm going to get it washed and dried and ironed, and then I will put a picture at the end of the video so you can see what it looks like. This is awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. 
Have a great night or day or week or weekend or whatever it is. And we'll see you next time.